What is going on everybody? Techthusiast here and in this video I'm going to show you the complete setup guide on how to run the official Citra emulator for your Android device. Now the first thing we're going to do is head over to the official Citra EMU website and then we're going to scroll down until we come to Citra Android page. Click on that and again we're going to need to scroll down until we come to the Google Play Store link. Click on that now if you're on your Android device then most likely this will open the Google Play Store link and you can install from there. If you're on your desktop make sure you're signed in, click on install. If you've got more than one device select the correct phone. Then when you click on continue it will actually install it on your Android phone. Alternatively you can go on to the official GitHub page. Here you will find the latest updates faster than the Google Play Store. So as of right now, Beta 5 is the newest version. Click on Assets and then make sure you download the APK. If you've done it on your PC, transfer it to your phone. If you've done it on your phone, you will need to find the file and I'll show you what you need to do. Once you're on your phone, open up a file explorer, scroll down to Download, then find the APK. Tap on it, it will ask you what you would like to perform. Click on install. Now you need to enable install unknown apps. So we're just going to tap on that button here. Click back and it will ask you what would you like to do. Click on install. Let it install and it's as simple as that. The first time we run this emulator, it will say that this software will run games for your Nintendo 3DS console. No game titles are included. Before you run, please make sure you rightfully own the 3DS game that you will place on this device. So now I'm going to show you how to dump your Nintendo 3DS games and you will need a hackable console. And for that, you will need to look out for a separate guide. Now in my case, I have the new Nintendo 2DS XL and the game that I will be using will be Super Mario 3D Land. So we've got the game here, so what we need to do next is to turn off the console. Now once it is turned off you will need to hold the start button and the press the power button and you will come into what is called God mode. So what we need to do next is to scroll down to where it says game cart, press A. And then we're going to scroll down to where it says trim.3ds and this has got the game file size there. Press A again. So we've got several options here. Straight away you can go to copy to the game directory which is gm9 forward slash out. But since we want to decrypt the game at the same time we're going to go on to ncsd image options. Then we're going to scroll down to where it says decrypt file. Press A, uh, give it a few seconds and it should uh, start decrypting the game and it's as simple as that. A few moments later. And that is it, the game is dumped, you can press A, we can turn off the console and then transfer the game over to your phone. A quick way to find out if your game is decrypted correctly and if it will open on Citra emulator is to try it on the desktop application. Now find your game and here it says the ROM is encrypted. Please make sure you follow the guidelines. So if by any chance you have the encrypted version then what you need to do is download this application. I will leave links in the description. A batch 3ds decryptor. Now open it up and drag the contents out to any folder and make sure you have the ROM file here. Just drag it and then drop it onto the batch file. And after that it will start decrypting it and let it do its thing. So I have sped up the video. A 2 gigabyte game takes about 20 seconds. Now we're going to go back to the folder with the decrypted ROM and as you can see it is also slightly smaller than the original encrypted ROM. 
and we can see the game icon double click and as you can see the game is starting to run now back on citra emulator once we open up the emulator you need to give it access to your storage device now we need to find a directory where your games are i have created a folder called 3ds now here do not select any of the games but select this directory now all of your games will populate here so the next thing we're going to do is go into settings and i'll show you what each of these do so firstly we have premium now this is if you want to support the developers as of right now they have two options here change theme to light and texture filter now if you click on it you will be asked to contribute and one good way to do that is to have google opinion rewards that way you can get free credit for the google play store and you can support the developers to continue on this emulator next we're going to go into general the first option is enable limit speed so sometimes games might go beyond what they should do click on that so they play at the correct speed and then the next one is limit speed percent here you can play around with it but as of right now we can leave that alone next we have system so we've got emulated region if for any reason you want to pick a particular region you can do that or leave it on auto select the same for language you can leave it on english or you can check the other languages that are available we've got system clock type so device clock will be the time that is on your device simulated clock i believe will be what you will set up on the citra emulator and then we have system clock starting time so here you can give it a specific time for it to use and next we have camera now this is a new option that's available on the official android build this was not available on the mmj build so here you can select the image source so device camera still image or blank so as of right now i'm not going to change any settings as you don't need to and you can start playing this emulator so the next setting is gamepad and this is a very important feature as we can use control pads as long as they are compatible by bluetooth you can get some generic ones or connect up your xbox control pad so here are the options so you got the box standard really circle pad is also included as well as your c stick and d pad and then the triggers then the next option is graphics and we have internal resolution so we can increase it by increments of up to two three and four so the higher you are the more stress it will have on your phone then we have other settings here enable linear filtering enable asynchronous gpu emulation this is one of the new features that made it into the official build and as it shows here if enabled it will improve the performance and we're going to just leave the accurate shader multiplication disabled then we have audio and this is one of the options that i am disabling for now enable audio stretching as i did find it does improve some of the sound quality when playing the game and lastly we have debug and again make sure you keep everything enabled from cpu jit to hardware renderer and hardware shader if you disable any of these options as you will notice that the performance has dipped by quite a lot now backing up to the main menu if you click on the heart once again it can let you upgrade to premium click on the folder you can change the game directory or install cra i will leave that for a future video so now i'm gonna open mario 3d land give it audio access and i'll cut straight into the gameplay and show you some of the extra options available if you want to change the layout of the controls just pull down the notification click on the three dots configure controls 
and here you can change the layout so right now I can move the d-pad and the joystick around wherever I like and the same applies for the buttons on the right you can customize that to your liking and also the start and select and click done that's changed for you so the next one is amiibo and I think I'll leave that for another video the next option is landscape screen layout so we're on default right now now if I were to change it to portrait this is what it will look like in landscape mode however if it's on portrait mode you'll have a better uh, layout the next one is single screen so there is no smaller touch screen on the right hand side so you're getting a bigger display some games might not need the other screen and then if we go back in again and go to side by side so the screen sizes are pretty much the same and some of you may prefer that view but do bear in mind you need to change the button layouts again on the right hand side now let's just say back to default and let's take a look at the next option and that is swap screens so here the touch screen has become bigger than the top screen of the 3ds console which isn't really practical and the next option is show fps so here we can see the performance so right now for super mario 3d land if you look at the top left hand corner it's about 60 frames per second now if we disable show overlay you're not going to see any on-screen controls so obviously if you're using a bluetooth control pad this is the option to choose and then the last option is open settings so here you will have access to all of the settings as you would before launching any game and you can also change the resolution of the games on the fly so you don't have to exit the game to do that so let's try on three times internal resolution and the performance has taken a dive so we're about 39 frames per second right now there will be other dips 29 frames per second here right now and obviously the higher the resolution the more impact it will have on the emulation some games will be slower or unplayable so I'm just going to go back in, back into internal resolution put it on two times internal resolution and that should be a lot playable there will be a few stutters as there is no shader cache support on the official build at the moment okay so that does it for this tutorial video and if you did find it useful give it a thumbs up if it is your first time here then please do consider subscribing as I have more videos coming up so make sure you hit that bell icon so you get notified as soon as I release my videos please do follow me on Twitter and Instagram and like always thanks for watching and I will catch up with you in the next video